guess what are some common misconceptions when it comes to uh, injury mitigation for for athletes? Uh, how, how could you sort of dispel them? Yeah, I think a, a lot of our profile tends to focus on one thing. So like, you know, exercise prevents injury or if you load manage that prevents whatever else. And in the reality is, it, you know, it, we're, we're priority approaches to a group of athletes who are all very, very different history, their training load, their, their injury history, etc. One of, of, of the big, big myths is that there's a silver bullet from when there isn't, or at least in my experience, there isn't that every, every looking to build robust athletes, it's always around their anatomy um, specific to their sport and the training and playing load. In terms of I guess, practical tips for both athletes and coaches. Um, what do you find is, uh, over the years, have you found is sort of, what are the basics? What are the most, you know, what are your big rocks when it comes to, uh, you know, um, rehabilitating athletes and making sure they return back to confidence and, and return back to performance? I, I think, again, it comes back to um, individual life. So you, you talk about performance. And so from a conditioning point of view, you know, where my deficits or what do I need to be able to tolerate to get back up to that level view, um, rather than sort of saying, you know, every serious injury is calf weakness, uh, that's a piece of it, but so is, so is your explosiveness, so is your running mechanics. And so having a very broad, all the components that can contribute to that injury. When you're working with an athlete one-on-one uh, or, or you're managing a group uh, of athletes, how do you find that balance on knowing when to, to push and when to pull back um, you know, in the moment? So obviously you've got your plan, um, but yeah, what, what are some of the key areas that you sort of take into account when you might scale the load or, or drop back the load or increase the load um, in session? I think, yeah, um, you know, starting with the very important, you know, you have an idea of what the strengths and weaknesses are, are and then what you want this training block to keep. Um, there naturally is a, you know, over or an intensive training block accumulates over, over time. So building in those appropriate recovery periods are important. Um, but but you, you, you need to provide a four week block or a six week block. But again, depending on their training history, some athletes will be able to tolerate more or some athletes will be able to tolerate less. Each session on its own merits and making sure that that we're maximizing the quality of that session is very important. And back to sort of uh, rehabilitation uh, for, I guess, groin injuries. Um, what are some of the most important exercises do you feel uh, when if someone's got a groin pathology and they're, they're returning back to their field of sport, but um, they're in a phase where they might be just straight line running in the, in the current phase, um, what are some areas that you need to sort of develop in the gym to bridge the gap for what they're not getting in on the field yet to, you know, and to be able to prepare them for sprinting and agility? Yeah, I think you, you could split that a little into choose groin injury, a, a muscular tendinous tear. Obviously, we need to redevelop the swim of that injured muscle group uh, so it can tolerate the load. Uh, I think a lot of injuries, the focus on rehab is the frontal plane and hip adduction in particular. They're very powerful hip flexors uh, and many of the injuries in terms of excel are more to do with the sagittal plane than they are alone to do with a, a quick kick. So I think training patterns of movement are getting strong in those muscle groups it's important for the parents of developing athletes uh, or de- or younger athletes listening in that perhaps don't have the support of uh, a physiotherapist and strength and conditioning coach in their corner. What would be some um, helpful practical tips that they could apply to their weekly routine to ensure that uh, yeah they're you know to help the mitigate injury and and have a, a long career. Yeah, I, it's really interesting. I saw this morning of of of, um, of two. Premier League, very, very big money, and a picture of them um, when they were under four Premier League club because they, they weren't they weren't good enough. Um, 
and 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 there's now that you know selection in youth teams usually does not involve selection in senior teams or or at the highest level. So I wish and and you know ensure that that you're 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 doing and um, and nearly nearly all any all development issues that I I would see and obviously I'm biased by being from a management uh, or sorry uh, trying to 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 do too many things with too many sports sports, sports. 